my name is Alan Kane. Um, I'm director of development workshop in Angola. Um, we are working on a climate change project in the coastal regions of, uh, of the country from uh, Cabinda in the north, Luanda and Benguela in the central part of the uh, southern coast. Well, the main problem um, is actually inherited from the years of war. Um, uh, the civil war in Angola started at independence in 1975 and uh, lasted almost 20 years, uh, almost 30 years in fact. Um, and uh, during those years the uh, climatic or the meteorological stations, the water stations that collected hydrology information were destroyed. And um, uh, these were the years when uh, most of the uh, climate change um, happened in, in uh, in this period. So we have a period um, really up until 2002 when uh, there was almost no climatic information being, being gathered. Um, at the same time there was a massive shift of populations caused by the conflict in the interior of the country to the coastal regions. Because of the um, increased variability in rainfall we get more intensive storms, uh, there's severe flooding and uh, these affect particularly the people living in um, these low-lying um, uh, basins around, along the coast. Um, poverty is another issue that um, is uh, chronic in um, the slums of Angola um, and people have tended to seek um, places to build their houses in some of the cheapest lands and, the, and the, um, those tend to be lands that are more susceptible to flooding and, uh, um, and erosion. Well, our um, program aims at trying to begin to fill in that gap of information that is missing, um, that 30 years of uh, lack of information. And we're doing that, one, by um, trying to reconstruct some of the historical data going back into archives, even in um, Portugal and Britain, uh, where some of the um, colonial archives have been uh, stored. But um, more um, importantly, to gather the stories and the oral histories from people who have lived through this period of time. Memories of village elders, um, women in the community um, uh, who have memories about the um, the flood years and the, the drought years and we're starting to reconstruct um, information also from uh, journals, from newspapers um, we've been able to archive over the last uh, 10 or 15 years. We've been able to use um, um, you know, satellite imagery, geographic um, uh, information systems, remote sensing, together with um, uh, data that we've collected through communities, through um, we've conducted uh, over 5,000 interviews, uh, household interviews in those areas, and we're able to start to put together um, uh, maps of those risk areas in each of the three uh, urban centers. We're finding between 5 and 10 percent of um, the people living in these coastal cities are living in highly risky areas. Um, um, we're gathering information also around their access to water and problems of sanitation and more than 50 percent of the uh, populations in these cities don't have access to uh, potable drinking water in their homes. What we found is um, that we're able to actually um, um, produce what we're calling participatory risk maps um, that uh, show the uh, areas that uh, where there are high incidence of um, diarrheal, malarial diseases, but also areas that are susceptible to flooding and, and erosion. So we're able to construct um, um, uh, risk maps for each of the uh, urban areas and these um, are um, useful and very and essential information for urban planners for um, uh, developing municipal plans um, in these um, uh, in, in these cities. There's been a lot of interest from the uh, Ministry of Urbanism and Housing. Um, Ministry of Urbanism um, uh, is also responsible for developing um, strategic 
plans around urban development and um, looking at um, uh, ensuring that cities uh, grow in a way that um, avoid um, uh, occupation of these environmentally risky areas.